Hey guys, welcome back to the jungle. Sprangatang here. Welcome to my brand new channel about mycology. Here, I'll document my journey so that we can all learn from not just my mistakes, but also my huge successes as well. I'd like to start off with a quick comment of the day from Wild Wavy Cap. He says, I've heard Sprangatang is the stone ape from the theory. I'll, uh, I'll plead the fifth on that one. Anyways, Today I wanted to give you all an update on how all of our current channel projects are going as this is the first attempts of me hunting for specific traits and trying to isolate them. This is 100% something that you can all do from home as well, so follow along and watch as we all evolve together as one mycelial network. Right now, you'll see me putting together some basic cocoa core substrate as I've been using this to see the difference in between how the flushes will be. So far, I honestly haven't noticed much of a difference, if any, as opposed to running vermiculite mixed in. After, you make sure your brick is at 650 grams, cause I almost promise you it's not. Go ahead and toss it into your bucket. This is the beginnings of a bucket tech pasteurization process. More information on this in my how to prep CVG video, which I'll include a link in the description for you all. What I found for me to work is that with every 650 grams of cocoa core, I plan to use three quarts of water to hydrate it. This has provided me some really nice flushes and honestly love how simple and easy it is to make. Make sure to set your stove to high and then after 10 minutes, you'll be able to come back just in time to some really nice boiling water. Now, it's time to pour the water. I try my hardest as well when pouring to make sure to get some of the water on top of the cocoa brick as it helps to break it down a little more before my next step. After that, I just mix it up. This isn't really a needed step, but I always make sure to mix it before spawning and after making it. This provides more even field capacity and would benefit your mushrooms just more in general. I wouldn't go much more than two minutes, but I just usually break up the whole brick by then. Once you're done with that, go ahead, wrap it in a heavy blanket and ensure that it is keeping temp for long enough. And then the reason I made this CVG is to spawn our colonized grain. This is our grow along, at least one of the parts of them. We also have the clone plates that we're working on. Two out of the three made it, so they'll be getting spawned into a 32 quart sterilite bin. Besides that, we also have our clone plate updates. These are getting transferred just from a little early in this stage, but I'm not too upset at all. I plan to step back from agar work for the next two to three days and really wanted to make sure that these guys didn't have any contamination on them, so I decided to transfer some clean growth early. I didn't want to leave these for too long. My goal in these transfers are to be as small as possible. This minimizes the chance of high genetic variability which gives me the chance at a culture with no other fighting mycelium working against it. In theory, this should provide better flushes. When using liquid inoculant made from a clone fruit, I have noticed that it provides a lot of the similar fruits with also more fruiting as well. Just some things that I've noticed myself, not anything everyone has to pay attention to. Today, you'll watch me work with no gloves. This is uh, actually a first for me, but I hope that I can make this a little bit more of a habit. Maybe. Uh, I don't really like the waste, but at the same time, I do like to be clean. It makes me feel so free while I'm doing it. The only scary part is the worry about having the contamination on my plates. I'm very worrisome about that type of contamination, so if anything does happen to these plates, I 100% blame it on my hands. I use ISO alcohol in between most transfers, and hopefully I was able to clean enough, but we'll see. Sterile technique really matters in these situations. Now, today, I'm using my mini 3D printed flow hood that I got from my friend Valid P over on Etsy. This is one of the cheapest options that I've found available for a starter flow hood for beginners. Now, this isn't a fully laminar flow hood, but it is a fresh air flow hood just to get fresh air over top of your plates 
and over top of what you're doing so that it does prevent contamination. It's a 99.7% HEPA filter and I've seen a lot of people actually run Gordotech, which is DIY version using a fan filter. And that's done some really nice success. So this just goes to show that it doesn't have to be laminar, at least in most cases. If you are interested in this flow hood, go ahead and check the description. I have a link for a discount code as well. Uh, they also released a newer, bigger version. So go ahead, check it out. And if you like it, let me know. Another thing I've noticed is that while working on these plates without gloves, I really don't like how they fog up. The problem is, I can barely see the mycelium while I'm working on it to begin with. And then to top it off, I can't really see over the mist. I might go back to gloves. Once you're finished up, like always, just make sure to date and label each of your plates before packing up. Nobody likes mixed up cultures, especially if they all look the same. And real quick before we go, I have a website that I just created giving you all the opportunity to support the Sprangatang Love wearing my merch. Doing so helps me to turn this into my full-time job. We have some really nice hats, shirts, hoodies, and even face masks so you can show your mushrooms you support me while doing your mycology work. I also have a Patreon where I post daily content about my grow along with full informational fruiting content as I progress through my journey in mycology. When you become a patron, you gain access to my Discord server. This is where we can all create a great sub-community around these amazing things we call fungi, along with also make some amazing friends in the process. On my Discord, you'll be able to get a hold of me with any myco-related questions. Along with this, we'll be doing giveaways, group grows, and trading genetics as well. If you ever need any help, I'll be on here daily to try to help everybody out that I can. Alright guys, that's enough from me right now. Thank you all so much for tuning in so far. Make sure to drop a comment so that we can keep doing the comment of the day at the beginning of my videos. Let me know what you'd like to see, what problems you're having, or just let me know how your day was. Have a great day everyone, and be safe out there. Peace.